Did you put suntan lotion on that? So let me uh, just get started with a very quick introduction. Uh, my name's Mike Gillette, and I'm uh, representing the Board of Selectmen uh, in introducing, uh, introducing this concept. Uh, we've been uh, talking about a, a cross uh, connection for sidewalks uh, in Westwood for a long time. Over the last year, uh, we focused on Gay Street. And we've been in front of the public now. I think this is the third time we've had a, a discussion about the plans. Uh, this has gone to town meeting now, received the appropriation that we need uh, to, to do the design work and the analysis and the cost <coughs> estimating uh, that will lead to a decision as to which side of the road, there's various locations along the way. Um, so. Uh, that's what this public hearing is about. We're at the 30% design uh, with the funds that we will receive for town meeting. We'll have another opportunity at 70% uh, for uh, more fine tuning that will go on um, before we decide exactly how we're going to fund it through grants and that sort of thing. So it's, it's a process that we've been engaged in. We're listening carefully to the public. We want your comments and we thank you for, for coming here tonight. Um, I'm here with, I'll, I'll introduce the <coughs> staff. Todd Corson is our DPW director, and Brendan Ryan is the deputy director. Uh, Nora Lockmain is here uh, from the Community and Economic Development, as is Abby from the planning. Mike Walsh, uh, the selectman, is here uh, listening to the discussion. So uh, we have a, no a number of town officials that are interested in hearing what you have to say. Um, and uh, we encourage you to uh, make comments and to then to help us <coughs> grow this project in a way that can be as acceptable as possible to everybody. As you know, we'll never, we'll never make everybody completely happy, but our endeavor is to increase safety for pedestrians and bicyclists along, along Gay Street. That, that's the ultimate goal. Um, so without uh, any further uh, pause, I'll, I'll have Todd and Mike take over the, the presentation. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you again uh, for attending tonight. <coughs> this has been obviously in the works for almost two years now, and we're finally at the point now where we have a 30% design. I think our goal and objective going into town meeting last spring was to get to a point where we could provide each and every one of you answers as to you know, what trees are going to be removed um, and or replaced rock wall, linear feet, how much of it would be disturbed, <coughs> and obviously the biggest question, what side of Gay Street is this sidewalk going to go? And tonight we're here to answer all those questions, uh, present two alternatives, and let you guys weigh in. I always say at the 30% design level, it's an opportunity for you as residents to weigh in, and as I mentioned at town meeting, it would be great if we can take your input at this point and come back at 70% and say 100% of it we were able to put in and, and kind of apply to the 30% design and here we are at 70% and we've done everything everybody wanted to do. That said, it's highly unlikely. But there might be two or three or perhaps even more <coughs> comments that are made tonight that we table for discussion and are able to implement, incorporate into the design and then present at 70%. Uh, Mike Myers is here from TEC with his staff. The one thing I will ask is the presentation is it's quick. Um, we can get into specifics, but at the end we'll do a general Q&A, just questions about the project in general, we're more than happy to answer. Once we get into the very specifics, I know there's several of you here, and if I lived on Gay Street I would want to know specifics about my address, we can break down into working stations and go over those specifics one-on-one. -on -one. We just don't want to do it in the general Q&A forum. So I thank you all for being here, and that said, Mike Myers from TEC. All right, thanks, Todd. Um, also joined uh, tonight by Jonathan Rockwell, and in the back we have Jason Brzezowski and Lauren Nicholson, uh, all from TEC, and all have had a, a great opportunity to, to play a key role um, in the design of this project to date, uh, both in the office and in the field to try and, and get a real good understanding of, of what we're, we're working with out there. <clears throat> 
So just to, to recap where we were when we met last time um, in October of last year. Would be possible to show that isn't very visible if we could leave it this? A little dark. Yeah, it's hard to see it right over. Yeah. Right on the right, Mike. Do you see the... Uh, no, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't count. Oh, no, it room. doesn't. It's a safety issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but this light's on the light. Better? Okay. <clears throat> all right, so just to, to kind of recap where we were um, last October, uh, we all knew there was a need. Um, there's a need for that safe pedestrian connection uh, between High Street and Washington Street. Um, a lot of your community members are, are out walking along the side of the road, some in the road, and a lot of you know, community members don't feel safe, safe walking out there. So there's, there's that need. We talked a lot about that at the previous two meetings. Um, we know to implement that need, there's gonna be some impacts. There, there'll be some impacts to, to stone walls, trees, and wetlands, those <clears throat> things that really contribute to the, the true character that's out there today that each of you get to enjoy each and every day. So because of that, that's our top priority, to make sure that we are preserving those things uh, to the maximum extent possible when we met, we were at a very, very early stage, a conceptual stage. We were looking at things from up here. Um, it's shown by the, the map on the bottom. That's a Google <laughs> image with property, property lines that are shown as approximate. We weren't really into the details at that time. Because of that, we didn't have the answers for you last time. We, didn't, uh, we weren't able to quantify impacts. So that's what we're here today, tonight, is to, to talk about um, present the data to you and again this this portion will be very quick um, so we can spend more of tonight <coughs> hearing from you about general concerns questions about the process and then breaking into those those working groups <coughs> so where are we today we're at a 30 percent design stage um, what we've done to this point in engineering terms is created a 3d uh, three-dimensional model of the corridor of gay street what does that mean <clears throat> the plan on the, the top there is a representation of a, a much more detailed engineering plan than you saw on the last page, which was the Google imagery. <clears throat> this plan has existing, con existing condition survey under it. What that means is probably about a year ago, you may have seen some of our staff out there with the tripods. They were out there locating those stone walls, the trees, locating the, ro the road, <clears throat> showing the uh, property line here in red, trees that could potentially be impacted in green, stone walls in gray here, and then the potential new location form in purple, and then this blue area here represents um, a potential uh, sliver of a, a wetland impact. Uh, so this was a good represent, representation of those, those three impacts. Now how do we assess those um, where this is only really in two dimensions? Um, we start to look at things in three dimensions when we cut the roadway right here, uh, right about the N in granite, and that, that's what you see here looking out towards Washington Street. So on this cross section, you see a, a six inch high vertical granite curb. It's also six inches wide, five foot sidewalk. And then this is the really important area here where you can see the existing ground is dashed right here. And then how do we, how do we tie in and, and match into the existing conditions as quickly and, and with least amount of impact to those resource areas? So this section here gets cut every so many feet along the entire corridor, so it allows us to really model that and be able to present to you tonight some impacts. <clears throat> so we didn't look at just one alternative. We looked at basically two sidewalk alternatives, running a sidewalk along the, the north side from High Street to Pine Lane. The second alternative would look at a sidewalk along the north side, cross over to the south at Thatcher, continue along, cross Milk Street, tie into the sidewalk at Buckboard Lane, <clears throat> and then you would tie back over to the north at Pine Lane, where the sidewalk, uh, crosswalk is today. We also looked at two cross-section alternatives, very similar, the only difference is 10-foot lanes versus 11-foot lanes. We also brought on a, a certified tree arborist, so that way, when we did this model, our engineers could go out in the field with someone who specializes in trees, and take a look at each and every tree along the corridor so that he could provide a preliminary recommendation on which ones could potentially be impacted and establish this matrix, which you'll see in, in a moment. 
<clears throat> so again, just to give you a snapshot of alternative one, you can see the, the green line along the north side of Gay Street to <coughs> complete that connection all the way along. So there's an existing sidewalk here up to Deerfield, and then you've got the existing sidewalk from Pine Lane up to Washington. So all new from Pine to Deerfield. Alternative two, you can see the green line along the north side proceeding down to Thatcher where it would cross over to the south side, continuing along crossing Milk Street, and then up to the existing sidewalk that's on Buckboard and tying into, again, that existing infrastructure that goes up to Washington. <coughs> to give you a representation of the, the two cross sections we looked at, uh, alternative B would more or less represent what's out there today. The lanes are about 11 feet wide and the shoulders are about two feet, one to two feet, which is the area from the white line to the edge of the road. This would, this gave us a first look at, all right, what are the impacts if we make to maintain that existing pavement section and add a sidewalk to it? <clears throat> we also took a look at alternative A um, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, anytime we're trying to make improvements to a road like Gay Street that is so sensitive to change and improvements, we want to try to look at this thing as, as close as possible. The 10 foot lanes also provide some traffic calming. There were concerns that were raised at previous meetings about lots of cars, high speeds. By trying to reduce the, the, the roadway section a little bit here, we'll make it less comfortable for motorists and make it more comfortable for pedestrians. <clears throat> this is a summary of the impacts. Uh, along the top, in the gray area there, you've got alternative 1A and 1B. Those alternatives both represent a sidewalk along the north side. And then take a look at it for the two lane alternatives. Alternative 2A and 2B, look at that sidewalk along the north till you get to Thatcher, crossing over to the south. Those two different travel lane alternatives. Our high priority areas that we're really focused, high, high priority impact areas that we're looking at, <coughs> highlighted in red here, are your stone walls, wetlands, and trees. And the trees we broke down into different categories based on size. So we could give a, a more accurate representation of what types of trees um, might be impacted per uh, working with our tree arborist. <coughs> Easements, right of entries, and fence um, relocations or replacements make up the next category. Uh, an easement would be anywhere the sidewalk just barely encroaches the, the public right of way, which would require the town to secure a very small permanent easement uh, for that sidewalk. Try to unplug it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely connecting. I might have reset it. What part of Gay Street is it? Here we go. Yeah, I know. I got All right, my apologies. <laughs> um, so where was I? Okay, basically, yeah, we were talking about the um, the yellow area impacts, your easements, um, right of entries, and fences that could potentially be reset or, or replaced. Um, the easements, again, would be anywhere the sidewalk um, goes over by a foot or so over that public right-of-way line. A right of entry 
uh, the town would work with the property owner to get permission to essentially enter private property. And, and the reason for that would to, you know, way down the road, if construction were to take place, it would allow the contractor to blend driveways in, do that grading work at the back of sidewalk, and make sure it's as good or better than it was before the sidewalk went in place. So if we look at the summary of impacts here, significant impacts on the 11 foot travel lanes. So if we were to take that out and just look at 1A, 2A, look at the two sidewalk alternatives with the 10 foot travel lane and put those side by side. <clears throat> if we start with the stone wall, we'll see almost half, the, half, excuse me, half of the impact for stone walls. The wetland impact, uh, that's square footage, 550 square feet versus 400 square feet and tree impacts are significantly less with the sidewalk along the north side. Uh, easements, right of entries, fences, utility poles, all relatively same, <coughs> relatively the same between the two alternatives. <coughs> but the one thing we look at here is, is we add the safety component now. Now we're looking at pedestrian crossings. With alternative <coughs> 1A, keeping that sidewalk on the north side, there would be no crossings uh, related to this project. You could get on a sidewalk, out here on High Street and get all the way to Washington Street without crossing the street. <clears throat> With alternative 2A, you'll cross at Thatcher, you'll cross, uh, cross Gay Street at Thatcher, and then cross Milk Street, which was expressed as a, a pretty significant safety concern in our previous two meetings. And then you would utilize the existing sidewalk at Pine Lane if you're looking to get to the school or further, further on to the east. So based on the data, at this point, you know, our recommendation would be to the town to continue to advance this alternative to really evaluate and, and continue to, to look at these impacts and get into some more of the design details. <clears throat> so the next steps uh, moving forward this summer, we'll be looking to um, get together with the Board of Selectmen, provide them with an update of this presentation and inf information we hear here tonight. Continue to keep some momentum on the design and also explore some funding alternatives. <clears throat> then come back and see everyone in the fall for our fourth meeting. Um, so with that, I'd love to take some, some general questions, um, concerns about the process, the work we've done to date. Um, we can answer those questions. And then if you have more detailed questions, such as what's gonna happen to the tree in front of my house, or I have a stone wall in front of my house, which I'm sure many of you do, um, <clears throat> we'll break up into those working groups and we can even create a fourth one up here and put some of the plans up here. So with that, any general questions? Sure. Hi, yes. Um, you mentioned that you provided cross sections or you, you had an example of one showing what may be graded uh, going along Gay Street. Do you mm -hmm. have any information on the volume of earth that would be have, have to be graded or removed um, along either iteration? Do that calculated up, John, as part of the estimates? Uh, Estimates are pretty yes, preliminary at this time. We don't have it available right now, yeah. but at the next an stage, estimate was done for the, for the cost estimating, yes. We have a very preliminary look at costs. Um, generally speaking, the cost of the sidewalks um, with resurfacing of Gay Street would be in the three to $4 million range for the entire stretch, uh, depending on the alternative. Um, at the next stage, we would get much more specific quantities on earth, earthwork. Yep, so our surveyors did locate all of the ledge outcrops, so we have those shown on these detailed plans. Yes. I'm curious, I live at 490 Gay Street. Okay. And I'm curious, you're gonna have the sidewalk dead next, right next to the road. Now, I know you've got traffic coming, and coming things, but even when I go out and get the mail out of my mailbox, I have to take it out from the back. I can just see a little child walking down Gay Street, unaware, and then a great big 18-wheeler goes by. There's a huge wind impact. Why aren't you considering putting the sidewalk on the inside of the stone wall? And that, like they do in Weston and mm -hmm. Wellesley and Lincoln, that makes it look more like a neighborhood. That's an excellent point. Um, that, is, that is something we will certainly look at. You don't have to be built some very expensive stone walls. Sure. So at this stage here, we've shown it along the edge of the road 
as we go to the next stage, that's one of the next things we're going to look at. Right now, at this stage, what we've looked at doing is everything within the public right of way where the town has control of. The town doesn't have control of those areas behind the stone walls until they work with property owners and talk about me doing that sidewalk behind the side. My wife doesn't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I couldn't tell. She was shaking her head. <laughs> but that would, again, be part of that next stage, that outreach with the abutters. And, and those would be great things to mention tonight so we can take those know where your property is and if you're open to that that's where that easement would come into play the town would need to secure a permanent easement so that the public has the right to pass along what is your property yes you make about how that re relates to costs and such <clears throat> granite curb if you think about it's about 50 bucks a foot so every thousand feet that's five thousand bucks how long are we talking john five. say how long is the total yeah about a mile and a half what's that about a mile and a half how much granite curb would you say yes seven thousand plus feet yeah <laughs> Significant costs. I can't do math in my head anymore. <laughs> Significant cost savings if you went behind the walls because you can now get rid of that granite curve. I think Mike brought up a good point too. And if there's anybody in the audience that is willing to, to volunteer to, to throw that into the equation, we'd welcome that and we can note that and try to incorporate that somehow, some way, but. I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, you, yeah, you, you, know, you guys need to. Ma'am, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what's involved in, that's a land taking. It's not necessarily a land taking. If you do it as a, if we did it as an easement, it, you would simply, you would still have your property line at the right of way. The easement allows the public the right to pass over that easement. There is an option to, you could, you know, take that, the town could take that land and include it in the right of way. There's two options. One would, one would take that red line that I showed you on the plan and move it behind the sidewalk. That would more or less be a taking. The other would leave that red line where it is, introduce a dashed line that would represent an easement. Yeah, I, look, I look down here behind the fire station Occasionally, as many times as I can, muster up energy. Ride my bike isn't to mm -hmm. catch the train, and um, it seems to be conventional sidewalks. You're not supposed to ride a bike in a conventional sidewalk. You know, you're supposed to ride a bike in the street. But this type of path, as we discuss, would be perfect for you know Good riding job. a bike. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I feel like a the sidewalk, you're not really going to ride a bike. I mean, kids might. You know, I understand that kids would feel safe on a sidewalk, but Anybody sort of trying to get up and down Gay Street on a bicycle isn't really going to be on a sidewalk. So I don't think you really, I think this other suggestion better suits that use of a path. Mm -hmm. no. You're right. Anytime you can get them off the road, if the town has the ability to, to work with the butters and gain that right away, you're right. It'd be a huge benefit. Yes, ma'am. As much as I'm opposed to this whole thing going down. <laughs> No, no stoplights. With the alternative 1A, there would be no crossings of the street. I understand that. Yep. Better from that standpoint. Only. Yep.
just wonder if it's children running across the street. How are they going to be able to do it? And look both directions. So what we could look to do is if you had on some of the connecting streets, so say we were working with Alternative 1A and we wanted to introduce the opportunity for um, people to cross from the south side. A lot of those south side streets don't have sidewalk infrastructure today. What we could do is if there were, was a demand for people that walked along the edge of the road on the side streets, you could introduce a short section of sidewalk at the intersection, install a crossing, and then what we would look at is a, uh, a warning device, not necessarily a stoplight, but a warning device to make it much safer. Thank you. Cool. Yes, in the back. Um, I live at 723 Gate Street, so it would not be affected by this. I, the only thing that I just, I would echo your safety concerns about the sidewalks around the edge of the road. Yeah. And walking into the Hamlin, <coughs> and I think especially since we seem to be a route for the cement trucks and things like this, it is a really, um, I mean, it's great, and I'm thrilled for considering a sidewalk at all, because I think it does enable a whole level of connection across town and safety that otherwise isn't an option until mm -hmm. you have know, four um, kids. But I do think that the difference between sort of a sidewalk right on the edge versus setback, and so it feels to me there's, there is meaningful safety consideration um, there. So Good. recognize that it has some complexity, but I agree that considering it. And I'm not sure if this is going to factor in your analysis so far, but I strongly recommend that you do take into consideration the presence of conservation restrictions. Um, the McFarland's own 572, 588, 590 on Gate Street, which covers over 1,500 feet of frontage, yep. and they have stone walls right on the property line, and um, they really would have no choice but to protect the conservation restrictions and strenuously object to the presence of the sidewalk sure. on their side of the road, which has interestingly shifted from the south side to the north side since October of last year. Sure. Um, I guess to, to kind of answer your question, the, um, with the restrictions, we've worked with those in the past. Our experience has been as, as long as we're able to maintain um, the character of that and not you know, propose any permanent impacts on that property that's protected, um, then everything. And I think we can look at the plans in more detail. I'm sure you've had a chance to see them. Um, but I don't believe at this time we show any impacts on those properties. And I will say, interesting or not, this w there was never an alternative A or B that was pushed in the fall. We were openly discussing this in the past three meetings, that we had two options for discussion. So even still, to this moment, there's two options that we're tabling, so. Um, in the back. So the um, to elaborate a little bit more on the specs of the width, um, some of that depends where the funding's coming from. So if we're dealing with your purely local funds, there's a little bit more flexibility on some of the regulations as far as width goes. The typical width is generally five feet. If this were to be a state-funded project, they're going to require full ADA compliance, five foot width, things like that. So some of that depends where the funding's coming from. So right now we've shown basically the industry standard, which is a five foot wide sidewalk. So in, so in the path scenario, you'd be putting a five foot wide path on the back side of a wall on the property? Could be five if you know, we hear, you know, bikes, if the, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that there are some property owners that are willing to, to work with the town to potentially go behind the wall and allow more flexibility. If that's the case, um, five foot is typically the industry standard for walking. Eight foot would be the minimum if you wanted to allow walking and biking. Yes. For the inside wall that you're just talking about, is there plans to have some kind of a, I don't know, you wouldn't have a curve in there, but how would you define when you're suddenly on, you're not on the path anymore, you're on the person's property? So if you were on the person's property, the way I would envision it is the edge of road would be very similar to what it is today and the path would mean you're behind the wall. So yeah. pedestrians would essentially be protected by the wall. Right. The re when you go up against the road, you introduce vertical granite curbing. It may not seem like much, but it, it provides a great vertical buffer to pedestrians that are on that sidewalk if they're along the wall. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, along the edge of the road. If they go behind the wall, you don't necessarily need to introduce the curbing, 
Does that answer your question? But how are you going to delineate what's the path and what's somebody's property? If it's on the inside of the wall. If it's on, okay, so if it's on the inside of the wall, that back of the sidewalk edge closest to your property would more or less be the property line. You probably see a grass line going up to whatever that, um, whatever that edge of okay. concrete and yes. pot mix. Yes, sir. Is this an option that's under serious consideration? And if so, why is it in those plans? The, so the reason it's not in these plans is because as we move forward with these, we hadn't talked about encroaching on private property. This is the first we've talked about it. So at the, this early stage, as we first took a look at it, we worked within the area that the town controls. We didn't want to come in today with plans that said, we're going to be on your private property. We wanted to you know, start the, the conversations and, and talk with you folks. And again, I'm thrilled to hear that there's you know, some willingness to. And if you moved in that direction, would there be conversations with people whose properties were taken? Would, there be, would it be a eminent domain procedure for all the homeowners, or would it be an option for each one to exercise? Depends on the funding alternative. Again, if it's a state-funded project, it's protected by what's called the Uniform Relocation Act through the federal government, in which you would be entitled to um, an appraisal and compensation for that easement. <clears throat> Similar to safe routes to similar to yeah to other mass dot type projects. How is that determined? How is that determined? Which funding source? Which funding source? Um, there's a process that uh, the town would look at with the state um, to develop what's called a project need form, display the need, and then go through a project initiation process to initiate the project. If mass dot approved the project, then it, it could potentially go down that path. But we're at the very early stages of looking at funding all opportunities, and that's one of our, our goals over the summer. I, 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 I Go ahead, Mike. Sad for um, that project, uh, Safe Routes to School project. We had some takings that were required, not as, it's, as extensive as this would require <coughs> the easements uh, behind the <coughs> walls. But in that instance, uh, we handle it in two ways. We, uh, residents <coughs> needed easements from had an option to take a cash value yes. that we had, that we appraised with an assessor or an appraiser I mean uh, or to take the equivalent <coughs> in a way of a tax deduction we gave everybody a form uh, with an appraisal of the, of the value that they would donate to the project and they would have able to use that as a tax deduction. I, Given the change in tax laws, I don't know if that, I just thought of that. I don't know if that all still applies that may, that may have changed, but it was viable back then. I think too, the, a lot of the consideration for why these thoughts and ideas such as behind the rock wall haven't been incorporated as options, quite frankly, I think a lot of the, the homeowners that would be impacted with these options probably wouldn't be on board with that. Um, I mean, it's, I hear what you're saying, but I think that's something that we, have to take into consideration is their feelings too that oh so you're going to go behind the rock wall in front of my house you know i don't know if i'm going to be on board with that however if you do it down the street that's a great idea but then <coughs> so uh, that's something that's going to have to be discussed and vetted out after this meeting but it's a great idea too it's not if I could just follow up on one point you made and i don't know because other people that regularly ride bikes down the road but from my point of view you mentioned that the, the Right now, riding down the A Street, I feel like I needed to at all feel the desks. As I said, I don't think you're supposed to be on the sidewalk as a bicyclist. You're supposed to be on the road. I'm concerned that, just listening to this, that if you go with the vertical thing, which I know is meant to slow down the traffic, from a bicycle's point of view, you've got the cement trucks coming up behind me, the road's been narrowed, there's a vertical wall now. Now I'm really feeling like I'm in trouble. Right? So I don't know if there's a way to address that. But I mean, is the sidewalk meant to accommodate bikes, or is it meant to? At five feet, the standard would be to accommodate pedestrians only. So it's but you more on the sidewalk. It's like, is it? It's not. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it's I don't. That's a public safety question. It's a Paul's question. No, Paul answered it last time. I can't remember. Um, we can look into the, the regulations on whether you can or can't, but I completely understand My concern your is that, yeah, you just, bikes are still going to be in the street, and now you, even as a driver, I'd be concerned about, like, pinning it. I guess, uh, her, you know? Yep. Um, I'm 
Steve Olenoff, I'm Vice Chair of the uh, Pedestrian and Bicycle Safety Committee. So we've been discussing this for a long time. And the option of putting the sidewalk behind the stone wall has always been right up front there. And I personally am a very big advocate of that. And I'm happy to see today for the first time we're hearing people recognize that and say, this is a, that's a good idea. <laughs> first, one person. <laughs> one person. No, I've heard it from several people. No, property. You heard it from one property owner. Okay. One property owner, right. <laughs> one half of a property owner. <laughs> 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 Who's going to be sitting in the center So, the, the option is, again, putting a vertical curve with the sidewalk right next to it doesn't make for a very safe <coughs> sidewalk. I mean, the vertical curve certainly is very important, right. but the sidewalk is still right next to the traffic or maybe two feet away from it, and people are not going to feel safe, and, and that's very important. I think the two important things here are safety and status, mm -hmm. and both can be achieved by putting the sidewalk on the other side of the wall, and, I, and you forgot that if you, an additional cost of uh, having the, the sidewalk along the road and the vertical curving is once you put the vertical curving on, you have to put in drainage. So that's the catch basin you have to put in. That's uh, pipes for those catch basin, and then figuring out where it goes. And because it's stormwater, it has to be properly treated. And then you have to start getting into detention basins uh, to meet the stormwater regulations. Uh, so that can be very, very expensive doing that. And so you have the, the cost of the stormwater system, the cost of the curve, and the cost of moving the wall back to get to your head. That's a, a lot of money. Uh, and it doesn't give you the aesthetics, it doesn't give you the safety. Uh, putting the sidewalk behind the wall gives you aesthetics and safety. It does all those things and saves you all that, that money. Yeah. More than enough money to compensate any of the homeowners that need to be compensated their uh, property, for their, their easement that's there. So again, towns like, uh, I'll start at the one, Weston, Wayland, Lincoln, Concord, uh, all those towns have these kinds of paths behind stone walls that they put in, and they might meander around a little, so if there's a tree there, a significant tree, we can avoid the tree. Uh, it's a win-win for uh, both safety and uh, aesthetics. You're absolutely and, right. And, and, and the people in those towns think it's great. They, they like it. In, in fact, in Lincoln, you have trails go through people's backyards. <coughs> and people don't say, wow, there's someone out there uh, hiking through my backyard. Uh, people are very respectful. They stay on the trails. Uh, I've been on those trails. Uh, I've been on cross country skiing in Lincoln. I said, gee, I'm behind someone's house. You know, their house is right over there. But they consider their house enough that cross country ski is going by, or a hike is going by. Uh, everyone gets along great. And, uh, and it's both safe and convenient and, uh, and very workable. So it's just an attitude that we can't quite achieve in this town yet. But it, it started to get here, and I'm hearing people say that, you know, it's about time that we've got more trails, and, you, and the trails have to go somewhere, and they have to go in front of someone's house or behind someone's house. But uh, they should be looked at as a good thing, not a bad thing. When they were first brought up years ago, people were, they were afraid of them because they are not used to that concept. But you look at all these other towns, again, a long list of them, right? some of the nicer towns, the ones that Westwood likes to compare itself to, you know, the other W's there, are Westwood and Wayland. There they are, they have it, and it's great, and they love it. So I think it's time for us to do that here in Westwood. The Pedestrian and Bicycle Safety Committee, uh, committee is, is all in favor of that. Uh, yeah, there'll be some uh, property owners who get excited about it, of course, but I think if we start getting one after another uh, to agree to it, then we can make this happen. And, and you look at what's out here now, the, the path that goes from Fox Hill down to Thatcher Street. That was done by the planning board when I was on it. 
we work with the developers to get that easement for the town, and then we got actually the, the uh, developer to actually put in the in the pan. Now another thing about some people don't seem to realize is it's going to be paved, and I and I believe preferred pavement now is concrete, correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be very well defined. It's not like right now we have the the, the path on, on Thatcher Street. I've been out several times to clean it, clear it out, but it takes work to keep a stone dust trail clear. Uh, we have concrete, it takes care of itself, and, uh, and, it, and it very well defines where the, the sidewalk is, so people aren't wandering off into people's property when they go down it. So I, th I think with a concrete path, five feet, now, yes, if you make it bigger, it'll technically allow bicycles to go on it. If you make it five feet, so it's technically only for pedestrians, there'll be a few small kids on bicycles or maybe uh, other, even adults, who may feel not safe taking their bike on, on, uh, on Gay Street. But the amount of traffic that, practically speaking, it's not going to be a problem. So I think if we can go with a five-foot concrete sidewalk behind the wall, and that's the best thing that we could have. It will work for everything. Um, I just want to say, to start by saying that I appreciate very much that the town is bringing the neighborhood in at this early design phase. Um, it gives everyone an opportunity to discuss the options. Um, it provides some, a, as we've seen, some um, input from the neighborhood as to what might be an, a, an additional option. Um, from my perspective, I think that the safety and, and all of the issues that um, were just discussed, uh, for safety, environmental, a path behind the wall is, is a better option. It has a lot of potential but it has a lot of potential for obstacles. Um, even without that, a sidewalk on Gay Street making that connection is a huge improvement in safety on the roadway. There are kids out there walking on the streets. I don't know how many years I've been running down that street. Um, you know, there are runners that go by, bikers, you know, but there are always a lot of kids walking right by my house, you know, down Gay Street. Um, and so I think it would be a huge improvement. Um, I have a, a couple of suggestions. When you, I, like, I like the way that you looked at the alternatives and provided um, an assessment of the impacts that each alternative provides. I thought that was well done. Um, and I think that um, I have a couple of other suggestions that I can make at some point that might help um, with, uh, one, of, one of my concerns is granite curbs tend to um, prevent the migration of amphibians across the roads. And we have wetlands along the road where we've had vernal pools. There used to be tons of amphibians crossing Gay Street all the time between, um, uh, between Deerfield Ave and Fox Hill across to the, the pond across the road. And so um, there, are, there are ways that that might be addressed, but I think this is, to me, this is the optimal way to begin a design f uh, process for the, by incorporating the, um, the input from all of the neighborhood, and I ap appreciate that very much. <coughs> Uh, my name is Charlie Donahue. I live on Gay Street, and uh, I, I also want to thank you for the time you're putting into this, uh, looking into all the options and the input you're receiving. I think there's a lot of great ideas that have been mentioned tonight, if property owners would be willing to allow the sidewalk to get off the road. Uh, I, I, I have one of my, I live, because I live on Gay Street, every day I, I look at, uh, number one, the high speed of a lot of cars going up and down the street. So it's a the, the, the risk is, is a lot of that is due. Now, I don't know what can be done about that, but it, people are so tired of waiting in line. They get on Gay Street, they just take off. 
So it's not 30 miles an hour, they're going 40 miles if they can get away with it. So uh, I don't know if crazy things like speed bumps or other things can slow down, might. So one of my concerns is a part of this process, get the police and uh, just to get into safety issues. Uh, we've had bad accidents in this area with kids getting killed on bicycles, sliding off snow things, mirrors hitting a woman jogging down the street. I mean, those are already happening. And so the issue of safety is one of my biggest concerns. The chance to go back and forth on Gay Street would be a wonderful thing, and I think you're doing the right thing to, to look into it. Uh, I don't know if you can make a sidewalk attractive, but the new sidewalk up by Bubbling Brook is, is, is ugly. You know, it looks like a, sh it looks like a shopping center. You know, it's now, maybe that's all you can do, and there's no other option. Uh, I've been told by people who like to run, they don't like to run on concrete. They like to run on as asphalt, little subtle things like that. And I don't know if these other towns that have thought this one through have come up with a design that is attractive uh, when it's out on the road next to the walls, but uh, that, that's another issue that I think is of some concern, and uh, uh, when I just hear sidewalk, I, my question is, there's some very ugly sidewalks that just ruin the beauty behind it, uh, and maybe that doesn't, uh, it, there's nothing you can do about it. But thank you for the time that you're putting into this and hearing us out, out from everybody, and I think it's a, a very good process that you've set up. This is, the, at, at the 30% design level, I've said this on so many different occasions, and we went through this during the traffic calming projects that we successfully completed. 30% design, typically we have a meeting such as this, and input is given, and we listen. And like I said at the beginning of the meeting, we like to take all the input and table it for discussion. But at this point, typically is when thoughts are expressed and people start assuming that that's the inevitable and that's what's gonna happen. And I can assure you that we, we're not making a decision to change course here and now create bike trails and everything else off this but we are listening to the input and perhaps there's a way and maybe not and again at 70 percent we can describe to you why it was or why it was not an option for us to go behind some walls maybe we look at this as an opportunity to blend the two trains of thought in a portion of the stretch of gay street we can go behind the rest of the remaining portion we say granite curb on the edge of pavement so I wouldn't jump off the deep end here and, and start listening to whoever's sitting next to you and saying, oh, well, that's where they're going now. That's not the case at all. Just everybody's here simply providing some input that I want to hear. We all want to hear. So if we can incorporate it, that'd be great. And again, if not, at 70 percent, we'll explain why we couldn't. Um, I think Mr. Greffin was the one that brought up right going behind the walls. It wasn't the uh, engineers here. That was the expanding of their scope. Uh, the other thing was last time I believe that the plan, the preliminary plan, was to go um, halfway down Gay Street on one side, the north side, mm -hmm. and then switch over to the south side the rest of the way. And that's not part of the two plans tonight. Is there a reason that that's that changed? The, the crossing at Thatcher over to the south side? Before. Right, I thought it was all one yeah. side or the other. This is, with this alternative here tonight, we looked at. So with alternative two, we looked at, you can see the green line along the north side here, red okay, line on the south side. We would cross over here and continue on the south side. Okay. And I, I think to um, 
when we go back to the last meeting, we weren't necessarily presenting an alternative that we're moving forward at that time because we didn't have the answers. We didn't have the data that we have tonight. Go ahead. Um, with the respect to the trucks, yes, it does make it a little tighter, makes them a little less comfortable. It'll slow them down, may make them look to seek alternative routes and maybe get them off your street. I'm hoping for you. <laughs> um, we are the alternative. <laughs> you'd still have a couple feet to the curb, but it, it would slow them down. That curb and the foot out of the lane would, would slow them down and make well, them. I mean, I would, look good. I mean, I would, with respect, it's different. I mean, when you're a truck, you need to get somewhere below the concrete. He's not going to, if the speed limit's 40, I mean, the speed limit out there is 40 now, and they're not slowing down, and it's mm -hmm. kind of dangerous to get two of them passing each other, or more specifically on the north side of Milk Street where you're going through the little chicane there. Um, nobody's slowing down from there at all, and you're just creating a more dangerous environment that you know, maybe if you have a couple of them have get on collisions, they might slow down, but at that point, you have a couple of get on collisions where you've run over a cycle. You know, let's make a, let's create a dangerous environment, have some accidents, and force them to slow down. And it's a lot of speed. It doesn't seem to be a particularly effective. 
I think the with the situation today, you're seeing them still drive those speeds. Um, data does show when you do make physical changes, and these, albeit, will be pretty minor changes to the road, it will affect speeds. Um, the 10 foot lane still does meet the design criteria for the type of road that's out there, the speeds, the type of vehicles that are out there. It's within the parameters of, of the design standard to, to go with the 10 foot lane. Um, and we're trying to shift some of the, you know, make it safer and more comfortable for pedestrians and, and take some of that away from vehicles. Go ahead. Sir. Is it permissible to restrict the types of vehicles that can go on any particular <coughs> That is, um, go through that better. It's through the state process. Yeah, the state can, you can implement uh, commercial truck restrictions, but the threshold is a 5% of trucks, and Gay Street does not meet that threshold. Gay Street, depending on direction, is three and a half, four percent commercial vehicles. Uh, has there been a road of detection? For something like this, we have counts. We have counts for this. We have ATR counts. Yeah. So we have ATR counts, which count the type of vehicles, the speed of the vehicles, the volume of vehicles. Um, a project like this typically doesn't warrant a full traffic study because we're not looking to make um, radical, you know, changes and improvements to intersections themselves anytime you're looking to change traffic control so if you were going to a new signalized intersection that would more or less warrant a full traffic study <coughs> yes. uh, this is a, a cosmetic question i guess and, and less the safety question which are more important but is there consideration for burying the poles or is it just removing the or moving the poles that's not the impact Based on our experience, to bury those poles would add three million ish more. Like two million miles. Yeah, two million miles. Where, where the town had an vote <coughs> on burying some poles, and I forget where they were, and it was like a, a additional fee on top of the bills that came through. It was on yeah. yeah. nice. so High Street, yeah. Washington Street, that we did it. Uh, there was an additional. I want to say it's three percent that was added to the utility bills for both Verizon for your phone and uh, and uh, your electric bills. Uh, the electric side of things uh, was born mostly by <coughs> commercial uh, freight payers, uh, but on the phone side of things, it was mostly by the residential, and it's not cheap. But, uh, just to do a mile stretch on on High Street. No, no I'm talking oh. about the mile stretch. Yeah. is what we did here. Uh, it was two or three million dollars, yeah. uh, and that was uh, that was a back long time ago. Assessment yeah. on the bills. That was an assessment on the bills. Not yeah. on the town. Not on the town. Right. And the reason it's so expensive is because the utility company insists upon doing it. And they charge whatever they want. It's, it's a matter of how you clearly come to be really not in control. Yeah. So they, they, you know, they, they literally rip off the cities and towns whenever they make any city or town try to put one of them on the I would offer this as a counter to that statement. Uh, they, they bid the projects on our requirement, uh, they fronted us the money requirement and charged us back. They didn't want to put out the money, uh, excessive money. So I, I think they look for the best price they could possibly get. <coughs> so I don't, I don't think that we got gouged, but it was just an expensive process. And the reason why we did it in the center is everybody enjoys the center of their community, but the street along the side, we didn't do any streets. Uh, that's a different matter. Uh, we did not feel uh, there was a, there was some talk at the time. <coughs> Doing something on Manhattan Street in the vicinity of the intersection, uh, and the, the town meeting didn't elect to do that. It was too expensive and too much of a private entity that wanted it done. In the last our last meeting, we talked about the problem uh, of moving telephone poles. That you didn't want a telephone pole in a sidewalk area. Now I gather. Are you, do you still plan to move telephone poles? Yes, we had. I can go to one of the sides here. Yeah. 
Down on the bottom here, anywhere from six to eight utility poles uh, to be relocated. And where would they be relocated to? Uh, do you know the top? Typically just behind the side dock, the new sidewalk. Which in this case would be on people's property. Yeah. No, in, in most cases where the poles are being relocated, there's sufficient buffer between the back of sidewalk and the existing right of way to accommodate that pole. You would have to put it behind the stone wall if you want. In some, you're right. In some of the cases, if we went behind the stone wall, we wouldn't have to touch the poles, so these numbers would go down. But if, part of and, and in our case, if if, <coughs> if you put the sidewalk uh, with the curb along the street, you would have, and, and we have uh, three telephone poles on our property, you would have to move the telephone pole to the back side of the uh, stone wall, which is not town property in this case. Right. No. Here's a space yeah. between the edge of the sidewalk and the stone wall. Look at the detailed plan. Well, I, I don't think we're going. Yeah. But to, in, in our case, the stone wall, half of the stone wall we own, half of the stone wall tunnels. I don't know what's the better part of the stone wall. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so if the utility pole is moved, the only place to move it is on the other side of the uh, stone wall. So that would, would now is that what happens in that case? I'd have to look at the plan, but if the stone wall is on private property, it typically requires a utility easement. But we can we'll look at the plan in more detail. Well, you look at your plan. There's a <coughs> the sidewalk does not go right through the edge of the stone wall. There's a space between the we'll stone check. wall, yep. the edge of the sidewalk, and the stone wall. And that's where the, that's where the pole is. Is it county way or, or, or yeah. public town? I believe it's accepted. It, it was accepted by the town. It's yeah, it may have been an old county at one time, but I believe it's accepted. That, by the town. Survey's been done. I, that was the question that came up. Where everyone doesn't understand always the concept of a right of way. It's not the edge of the pavement. It's where the, prop, the person's property and, and the right of way that the town owns. And in an ancient road. It's defined by stone walls. It's, it's the center of the stone wall. But somewhere in the past, the street's been engineered and been laid out. Uh, it could be elsewhere. It could be behind the stone wall on King Street. It's way beyond the stone way wall on King Street. Stone wall, right on people. Right. Uh, people don't realize that the street is actually on the front lawn. And when they had a sewer line put in it, in some cases, that's where it went. Uh, but so what was the result? Where the property line is it? No, 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 no. In fact, it goes behind the stone wall. So, so you can legitimately move someplace in some in some locations. It, as we mentioned before, we can get into specific addresses amongst the working, but in in some locations, it goes far beyond the rock wall, similar to Camp Street, not to the extreme, but yeah. same idea. Go ahead. I'd just like to ask a question since we've been hearing about the sidewalk for quite a long time now. It depends on the funding source. It's a, a major contributor, whether it's through the state or locally managed um, I mean, we by the town. It's I'd like to comment on that. So, our goal and objective from day one when we mission of, you know, let's design a sidewalk is to protect, to protect the town's interests. Um, in our department's interests, you know, everyone in general. In theory, we just want to table this for discussion for the town, have a design finalized, and give it to the Board of Selectmen, perhaps bring it to a town meeting, and see which direction the town wants to go. If the town so chooses to pursue funding sources <coughs> through the state or fund it themselves, that's great. If the town says, nope, in general, say at a town meeting, nope, we don't want to pursue Gay Street Sidewalk, we're good. At the very least, we have a design in our back pocket that in the God forbid instance, something happens out there and all of a sudden there's an uproar to go out and have a sidewalk put in. We don't have to wait two years to go through this whole process. So I guess in simple terms, to answer your question, would I like to go out and, and put a sidewalk in on Gay Street? Absolutely, I think it would be a tremendous project for the community, I think it would create a, a level of connectivity that the community has always sought out. 
Um, will that happen tomorrow? No. But I think if we go through the process, and assuming that everybody is on board with it, as we go through the 70% process, we have a meeting in the fall to, to, to explain where we are with 70%. <coughs> and then we go on in January, and we're at 100%. And then, it's, then again, it's a discussion to be had, perhaps at a town meeting floor, with the Board of Selectmen's endorsement. Um, and <coughs> as far as whether or not we pursue constru construction in two years, I don't think we can answer that right now. <coughs> I think, it, I think it, could it be in two years? Yes. I mean, could it be in a year and a half? Yes. It might not be. And again, if the town wants to just table this design once it's completed, so be it then. Our, our goal would be to put a formal design in the hands of the town and have the town say yay or nay whether or not they want to pursue this as a, as a construction project. And that's our job. I don't ever want to be in a position where someone asks me, oh, why don't you do a sidewalk on Gay Street? I want to say the town either decided to or the town decided not to, but if they didn't, there's a design in the, in the closet if you want to pursue it. I'll just add from my experience, uh, we've done this with roadways in the past. Uh, our streets, that are town streets, are not state streets. And lo and behold, a, a grant project that uh, made available by the state for one reason or another, uh, and we were ready to go uh, with a final design Winter Street is one example, Mountain Street is another example. And we were able, because we had designs in, in our pocket that were completed, uh, we were able to take advantage of those uh, grant programs and, and get the projects funded by the state. So that, that could be an alternative, we don't know. There is a grant project currently that uh, the state just appropriated a significant amount of money toward roadway projects uh, that they want to pursue. And it's available. We're not certain how it will come out, be defined, and what will be eligible. Uh, but if it happens that sidewalks are eligible for pedestrian reasons, uh, <coughs> we really want to take advantage. Say, so, could you just confirm, because there have been uh, several questions raised, uh, my understanding is it's a 10-foot travel lane and a 2-foot shoulder. Is that incorrect? That, that's correct. OK, so there is potentially Area for bicycles to, to not be bound by the cement. And in addition, I'm not being in position to clarify, but uh, the granite would only be on one side of the road, right? Yeah. So the other side of the road would presumably have a little more sense of openness Correct. for passive traffic. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. My third question, yeah, but. Um, is there something between 30 and 70 percent? And the reason I say that is because it seems to me that at a certain level, everybody <coughs> in the room has the same interest, which is to do something that benefits the town in a safe and aesthetically pleasing way. And I mean, I don't think there's people that disagree with that. I, I understand that there's individual concerns for individual property owners, fully get that. But to me, it seems like 30 percent seems fairly preliminary. 70 percent seems pretty well like getting near completion. So. Is that it? There's nothing, there's no other opportunity between 30 and 70 percent? I think we were talking about three meetings last time. 30, 70, it might have even been 30, 60, 90, just before we get to final, I forget exactly what it was, but the concept was to do three meetings along the way. I mean, if it requires more, I know on our behalf, yeah. we're happy to, to It just sounds to me like there's, <laughs> and I haven't been participating in this in the past, but there's some ideas that have been voiced in this meeting that seem like they need to be flushed out a little bit more, and it would be helpful to do that in a way that just tries to build consensus around a project as much as possible, yep. instead of having something that's polarizing for the town in an election. We, you know, we've, we don't need that. So our, our idea here was to be um, respectful in, in understanding the, the property owners there. When we first, you know, this initial shot at 30% was the property owners and, and not coming in with something that just showed impacts to their properties. Now we're hearing those things. We'll collect them, and and we'll we'll be working with with Todd and Mike and Brendan to to go through everything. I think meeting with the prop, making sure you know we've talked with each of the property owners where the sidewalks being proposed um, would be a great next step to make sure we're hearing all of their their thoughts along the way. So. <clears throat> so one thing that hasn't been mentioned, which the pedestrian and bicycle safety committee has talked a lot about is that concrete sidewalks can now come in colors. 
and, and you can have uh, a darker color, brown or red or, or whatnot, uh, when, when you make the sidewalk, you put that color in, it stays that color for pretty much forever. I know the Islington Fire Station, they tried to, they, they weren't happy with the, the way the color came out, but they, there is a color on it, so it's not that bright white. Uh, so are we looking at that also? In fact, it was brought up in one of our previous meetings, it was brought up and then the following meeting, we added a tint, just to, it was a very cartoon rendering, but yes, that's something that will definitely be explored. Yep. Yes, sir. General question on liability. Is, is the town more liable with or without a sidewalk? Is the town more I, Yeah, I mean, right now there's there's no pedestrian accommodation today. With if this project were to move forward, you know, through construction, there would be a pedestrian accommodation um, that would be within the land. That's what we talk about the easements and such to make sure they are within the public right of way. <clears throat> but as far as liability, I, I don't know if that really answers your question. As far as you know, whether they are or aren't. Go ahead, sir. So perhaps Todd and Mike could uh, walk through the mechanics of how exactly this, the decision is going to be reached on which side you uh, go down. So you have two alternatives. So how how are you going to actually come <coughs> to the decision? Once, so we're, we're going to obviously again take in consider into consideration what's been said today. But after this, we have an internal meeting. Um, we will be going before the board of selectmen, providing them feedback. <laughs> Um, with how this meeting went down and what was said and what we heard. Um, and at that <coughs> point, we'll probably provide them, you know, based on our information here, perhaps a recommendation and get their feedback based on that and see what route the Board of Selectmen would advise us in taking. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you'd want to add any more. Uh, I, I, well, I think the recommendation is, that's been made, is that the sidewalk will be on one side of the road and that it be on the north side to avoid crossings mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, and because it has the least amount of impact on all the criteria or most of the criteria uh, that were um, outlined as uh, being issues. Uh, and I think we're listening carefully to s serious objections to that recommendation. Uh, it was hoped <coughs> that the conclusion of this meeting we could, we could finalize the one side of the world because then we can concentrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially if we're going to start looking at seeing if we can wind the sidewalk behind stone walls, uh, you don't want to be doing that on both sides of the roadway because I don't think that, 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 that that's not cost effective. I mean, to build that, build off that, we're tasked with trying to achieve things, trying to improve safety and maintain aesthetics. And the data supports alternative 1A as far as, you know, balancing safety and aesthetics. Are there tweaks we can make along the way? Absolutely. And we've heard great feedback tonight that <coughs> is certainly going to help shape this design moving forward. Go ahead in the back. Uh, it just have a real quick. Uh, the existing conditions, what the line widths are now, and the um, uh, the side section. I think the 11 today, and the shoulders vary. I think some places you're going to see like one foot from the white line to the edge of the road, and two feet, and others. Um, but the the lanes pretty consistently at 11 feet. Shoulder varies a little bit. So uh, just to clarify <coughs> that, and just to make clear, I'm. Uh, big proponent of a sidewalk period, wherever it's behind walls, wherever it is, because uh, I'd like to walk up there with my kids too. But the, the, are, we, are we talking about at the moment that the preferred proposal is to reduce the travel lanes width in order to have a sidewalk? That is if we currently have 11 feet now, one to two foot shoulder, and we're going to go down to a 10 foot lane with a two foot shoulder. So yes, reducing the travel lane to 10 feet with a side to enable to buy a couple extra feet to go towards the sidewalk space is essentially what the data shows us with 1A. If we start looking at going behind stone walls, we may not necessarily 
need to reduce the travel lanes, but that would be another option we'd start to look at. Yes. Uh, after having heard uh, a suggestion about the behind the wall scenario, mm -hmm. is that enough incentive to actually study that on the proposal, or at least a mock test of it? Because there are some cost savings, as was brought up, um, that would be applied to um, the fix you know, to the project. I think that we've heard enough you know, to, to consider that, but it's going to take that working collaboratively with those property owners, too, to make sure they're on board, too. Uh, in addition, I think it would be important that the property owners know what the compensation might be or what their, what their choices are, and if they have to abide by it or at all. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. I, I can reiterate what LT said. I mean, a year ago, we weren't talking about a flight path and land takings and devaluing property along the We were talking about a sidewalk. And to, and to have the takeaway from this meeting tonight to be, okay, we have a third alternative. Let's do a bike path behind small walls. I think it does a disservice to everybody here. In the Sounds to me like there's a verbiage issue here. I mean, we're talking about a path from one side of the town to the other side of the town. Uh, when people use the term sidewalk, it seems to, most people, I think, what I've heard is they envision a point on that looks like a very urban environment. I think this, the term, maybe it's the same, the word, the path, which could be called a sidewalk, could be located behind stone walls. I don't know whether why that's automatically a bike path, I don't think that's the case. My point earlier was when something's conventionally a sidewalk, bikes are not supposed to go on sidewalks. So um, if you build a path that goes from one side of the town to the other <coughs> that can be usable by bikes or people with baby strollers or whoever, that's, I mean, I, I don't think one should be called a sidewalk and one should be called a bike path. I think we're just basically talking about putting a crossing from one side of the town to the other. I mean, I don't know if people disagree with that, but that's what I think functionally we're talking about. Yeah, the width is what's important. Five feet is, whether you call it a sidewalk or a path, five feet is five feet. If you want to make it a true multi-use path, you want something like eight feet. But we're not asking for that. I think we only want five feet. And that's what it should be, whether it's on one side of the stone wall or the other side. Right. We've always had five feet in mind just to try and keep things as, as narrow as possible and, and protect those aesthetics out there. Yes, ma'am. Whether it's inside or outside, um, or I guess in each case, uh, what are the responsibilities for the homeowners, or is it totally taken care of by the town in the winter months? Who's going to plow the sidewalk or this path? We, we would plow it. Even if it came inside the stone wall? Absolutely. We would make sure that there was access to do so. We currently run a bombard air route stops at the end of Deerfield and Gay and just drives down the middle of Gay Street until we get back to Buckboard. So there's a stretch there that he's looking for something to do rather than just drive. So that would be <laughs> Yes, sir. I'm not a bicyclist, but if it were a considered a bike path, would that eliminate the shallows, the, the, the um, biking on Gay Street? You would typically, you would leave them typically to give motor um, bicyclists the opportunity to stay in the road. Some bicycles prefer to stay in the road and, and are experienced bicyclists. Um, you could leave them. You, you could go either way. Really, We've made a commitment to through our complete streets program yeah. with all of our new paving projects around, <coughs> along all of our major roadways that we provide shower markings along with the signage for such. So. <coughs> Narrowing the road to 10 feet, that's something that's independent of the salt project. We can have a pedestrian bicycle safety committee is talking with DPW a few years about narrowing those lanes. Uh, we've got them to go down to 11 feet. They actually go a little bit more than 11 the way they measured it, because uh, it should be from center line to center line, and they get it from edge to edge. Uh, so, but it's not consistent still, so it's not consistent 11 feet, but, but making it 10 feet wide is a traffic calming measure that, that works. And we could do that tomorrow or that fall. No, not tomorrow because we just painted it. <coughs> but uh, the next time the lines get painted, it could be painted at 10 feet and that would hopefully uh, 
So it was traffic calming measure, slow down the traffic, and make it safer. You didn't know these devices were going to be able to do it. Doesn't help criteria of it is is that it has a truck every now and again. Anyone who uses Gay Street knows that especially in the mornings I drop my kids off at Hammond school and driving past there in a 10 to 15 minute period I can probably count 20 concrete trucks uh, at, the, at the start of the day. It's the same with the end of the day. So there's period when you have we know that there's a significant <coughs> number of large trucks like that's just the reality. Yes, ma'am. I, I just wanted to go back. Um, earlier you had said one of your major criteria was to eliminate the number of pedestrian crossings in terms of the alternative. And yet in the follow-up conversation, you talked about the opportunity to perhaps have crossings for people on the other side of the street to be able to get over the sidewalk. So I guess in that case, you still have the crossings and would not those crossings then help slow down the traffic because you're going to have those warning lights for the people crossing so I would lobby to seriously consider alternative 2A because, of, because if you're going to consider putting crossings in for people to get over from south to north what's the difference than putting it on 2A and have the crossing at that I think the, the difference would be is that to provide that the demand, the majority of the people are walking between the two villages to the school from the residential neighborhoods. They now have an opportunity to stay on one side and not cross. It's a huge benefit to the pedestrian safety. Um, when I mentioned providing those, you know, with alternative one, trying to, if there is only if there's a demand on some of the side streets. So if we looked at, say, uh, with alternative one here, if we looked at some of the side streets here, um, like looked at Thatcher or, or Milk, if there was you know, a demand to, to cross here, there's no infrastructure today. So, but if there were, we could look at those opportunities. There was some talk at one of our meetings about having um, you know, some access from the, the south side over to the north side to get up here to the um, parkland. Um, that's just if there's the demand, there's an option to do that. But, with alternative one, you can keep that 90% of the people that are walking along the north side. You don't have, there wouldn't be many people looking to cross the street because there's no infrastructure there today and it's really not that dense of a residential area. <clears throat> Is that it? Like, uh, am I correct in assuming that when you have the 10 foot design, you're actually not? Increasing the pavement, you're decreasing the pavement width versus the 11 foot lanes. With an alternative of 10 foot wide lanes with three foot sides, uh, be a third option. If we looked, if we did 10 foot lanes with three foot shoulders, we'd be essentially looking at these impacts. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 1B. 1B. My bad. We'd be looking at these impacts, Mike. So okay. we'd be looking at 2,400 feet of wall, <coughs> 900 square feet of wetlands. All right. So you look at the worst case. Put a lot of wall there. So if that's it, we'll hang out for as long as you'd like to, to look at some of the plans if you have some, some more detailed questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.